Greetings and in this short video presentation, we're going to see how we go about creating a bash script for scanning vulnerable ports. For this lab, we'll be using one virtual install of Kali Linux that has been updated. Prior to attempting this lab, everyone should have completed the first lab, which was the introduction to bash scripting. We're going to begin the lab by opening up a new terminal, and I have my terminal open up here on the screen. And the first thing we're going to do is open up a text editor. Now for this lab I'll be using Nano and what we're going to do is create a bash script that is going to scan for vulnerable IPs and then later on in the lab we'll be able to filter the results based on just those particular ports that we're looking for. I'm using the Nano editor but you're free to use any editor of your choice. So I'm going to create a new bash script and I'm going to call it portscan.sh and I'm going to open this blank script file using my nano text editor. So up inside of my Kali terminal I have typed nano space portscan.sh I'm going to hit enter and you'll see that we have a blank palette to work with. So in our script the first thing we have to do is identify the command interpreter that we want the script to use and where this command interpreter is located. This goes to the front or the beginning of every script that you create inside of Kali Linux or any other Linux installation. For this demonstration, we'll be using Nmap to scan the subnet of Google. And I'm looking for a particular port to be open. And that port is 5505. What I'm saying to the script here is I want you to scan this subnet range. I want you to find any IP address that has the port 5505 open and then I want you to output that to a text file called Aloha. What I'm doing here is I'm just copy and pasting these lines for the script from the lab into my text editor up in Kali and I'm trying to explain them as I go along here. Now this next line inside the script says opens the file Aloha and filters using the grep command for lines that say open and stores those lines in a file called Aloha open. That means that any port that is open for 5505 will be put into a grep filter and then put into another file called Aloha open. This next command opens the file Aloha open and cuts it at the second field F2 defined by the delimiter dash D semicolon then pipes that to a second cut command that cuts the file at the first field that is dash F1 defined by the delimiter dash D in parentheses and saves it into a file named Aloha vulnerable. Finally we're going to get the results of what we're looking for here and we're going to use the cat command to print to the screen exactly what is inside of the Aloha V-U-L-N. I'm calling that vulnerable, but you can call it anything you want. So I'm calling it Aloha Vulnerable, and I want to see the contents, and that's what that last command is going to do for us. Once the file has been built, we can cat the contents of that file to our terminal screen, and we can read the contents. Now what we should be able to see when we're all done is any IP address of any system with port 5505 open and a service running. I don't expect to find any because this is not a common service port. So now I need to go ahead and save this new script that we just created. To do this I'm just going to hit control X and it asks me do you want to save the modified buffer and I say yes and then I hit enter. Our script gets saved to our home directory along with any of the files that were outputted from the results. So everybody is located in the same location so there's not going to be any problem finding our new script called portscan.sh. We're now ready to go ahead and run the script using the sh command. So I've typed in sh space portscan.sh. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and you'll notice that nmap immediately starts up. Now give it a few minutes. It's going to go out and it's going to scan that Google subnet, come back with those results, and they will be presented to us up inside of the terminal. 
And here's our output, just as we described inside of our script that we wanted it outputted to us. So we see the different fields. We have three fields, the port, state, the service. And it's telling us whether the port is available or whether it's being filtered. And you're not going to be able to find anything that's going to be open up here on this Google subnet. Of course, everything's going to be filtered except what is absolutely needed. We see that none of the IP addresses have the port 5505 available to us. So that part of the script worked very nicely. And now I'm going to go ahead and clear my terminal, and we're going to move on to the next part of how we modified the script to add in text boxes and other variables. For this next part of the lab, I've opened up the portscan.sh, and I've deleted all the contents. We're going to start off with a clean portscan.sh file, and we're going to add in some new variables. As with all script files up inside of Linux, and using the bash shell, we have to use a shebang that is commented out that tells it where the command line interpreter is located. In this case, we're using the bash shell, and it is located up inside of the bin folder. Once we have our shebang in place, let's just go ahead and hit enter one time. And I'm going to copy and paste this right directly from the lab. And we're going to use an echo command. And what this is saying is we want the screen to prompt us to enter the starting IP address. Now make sure that you get the syntax correctly copied over into this text file. That is to say the quotes on the end and everything has to be in place or your script will error out. This next line of the script is saying whatever you input for the starting IP address, treat it as the first IP. That becomes a variable that the end map is going to use to begin its scan and know what range of IP addresses to scan for. So we have an echo for the starting IP address, so we're going to need an echo to tell us or to prompt us to type in the last IP address of the range. And again, we want this to be treated as a variable that Nmap can use, and it's going to be called last IP. Next, we create a variable called last IP octet, which is equal to the value after the third period in the last IP address. When a user enters the IP address into the last IP, last IP octet is equal to 255. We then follow that up with an echo command that's going to be commented out, but it's just as important as any of the other echo commands, so make sure that you get this syntax correct. We next need to be prompted for the port that we want to scan for. To do this, we're going to type in another echo command, and it's echo, space, and it's going to be in quotes, enter the port to scan for. And again, we want the script to read this information as a variable called port. And now you can see with this nmap command that we have added to the script exactly how those variables are going to be read. So anything that we input as a first IP, a last IP, or the last IP octet, and or the port number is going to be looked at as a variable and Nmap is then going to input that information, regardless of what the numbers are, into its script so that it can run the scan. On a side note, when Nmap is done performing this scan, we want it to go ahead and output the results to a web file or a text file called web. And we're going to go ahead and do some more cat stuff here now. So if I type in cat space web, I'm telling it that I want you to output the contents of the web file, but first I want you to use the grep command to filter it, and I only want to see the contents of IP addresses that are have the port open that we scan for, and I want that input or that output sent over to another text file called web1. Now, just as we did with our previous script, we can go ahead and get cat to format that output so that it's much more readable. And that's what we're doing here. And we're telling cat, I want you to format the contents that you were given for web one. And I want that information sent over to another file called web two and sent to the screen. 
And now that input or that information that was formatted and put into the Web2 file can now be read when we type in cat Web2. So we're now ready to run this script. So make sure your syntax is correct. You got no errors. Everybody's got double quotes. Everything's good to go. And now you can hit Control X. You can type in Y for yes and hit enter. You can use your up arrow to find the command that will run the port scan.sh and hit enter. And now it asks you for the starting IP address. You can do an IF config and you can find out what your network IP is and then you can get the correct IP information for your script. This is the IP address for my network or the network IP of it for my network. So I'm typing in 192.168.145.1 which is the starting IP and when I hit enter it's going to ask me for the last IP address. So I've typed in 192.168.145.254 because I don't really care about the broadcast for this network, That's which is 255. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Now it wants to know what port I want to scan for. And you can scan for any port. For instance, if you want to know if FTP is running on your network, well then you can scan for port 21. If you want to know if somebody's got a web server running on your network, well then you can scan for port 80. I'll go ahead and just scan for port 80 just for grins and giggles. And we'll see what happens. And now it starts to scan in just a few moments. It comes back up and it tells me that it found four hosts and that it scanned the entire range of the IP addresses in 2.46 seconds. And it tells me that port 80 is closed in just about everywhere, so I don't see a problem with port 80 running on my network. So the takeaway for this lab is to appreciate how useful bash scripting can be for pen testing and for hacking. We can use these scripts to help reduce our administrative burden of having to scan a large number of IP addresses and then filter them for specific outputs such as what ports were open on what IP address. So we know that our script, our portscan.sh, generated some text files. Let's go find them. So if I go up here to my files folder and I go in to the contents of my home directory, you'll see that I have those three files that were generated by the cat and the crap. Now, this first file is going to have some output. This has got some information about the status of ports and all that good stuff. And I can go ahead and close it out. Now remember, we told it to output any of these IP addresses that had port 80 running on them. If you didn't have port 80 running, then there's pretty much nothing to send over to the next uh, text file, which was Web 1 and Web 2. So when you open these up, Yes, they're going to be empty because there was no IP addresses that were running port 80. So just for grins and giggles, let's go back into the script, and this time we'll run it again. And this time I'm going to run it across Metasploitable 2, which is on my network. Now, I don't know that Metasploitable 2 is on the network. I'm going to scan that same range of IP addresses, and we're going to scan for port 80, and we'll see what happens. So to make sure that I get a clean input, I'm going to go up in here inside of my home directory. I'm going to delete these three output files. Let's go ahead and just delete those and send those over to the trash. And now we're going to go back over here to my terminal. Let's go ahead and clear it. And now use my up arrow and let's go ahead and run this script one more time. So again, it wants to start an IP address. I'll type that in. I'll hit enter. Now it wants the last IP address. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter to that. Then it wants to port. So I can type in port 80. I'll hit enter and let's see what nmap comes up with this time. So this time we've got a port 80 that is actually open up on the machine 1.30 which is my Metasploitable just for grins and giggles. And let's go see what those results look like now. So again here's the first output file. We got that done. And then we're going to have that sent over to Web 1. And there's that information. Now we're going to have it filtered one more time, sent over to Web 2. And there you go. So I know that the machine with the IP address of 130 has a port 80 running on it.
So imagine that I had tens of thousands of IP addresses to scan through and look for port 80. That last text file that we created, the Web 2, would have just the IP addresses of the machines that were running port 80. And I could do the same thing for port 21. Now, let's say that I've heard that there is a new piece of malware that is exploiting a certain port. I want to know if my network is vulnerable. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this script, and I'm going to scan all my IP addresses for that specific port that that malware is looking for. That concludes this short video presentation on how we go about using bash scripting to help reduce the administrative burden of having to pen test a large number of IP ranges. If you have any questions or concerns about the video or its content or the lab, please do not hesitate to reach out and contact your instructor. Thank you, and I will see you in my next video.